All right, welcome. So in this video, I want to uh, continue talking about regular expressions, and I've hinted at this in previous videos, but I want to show now how the regular expressions relate to the regular languages. So, uh, so far we've defined the regular languages as being those languages that are equivalent to the languages that could be solved with a DFA or an NFA. And we have proved in a previous video that NFAs and DFAs are of equal power. So this set is the same. There's no difference between these two sets. And now we've introduced a new model of computation called a regular expression. And we are interested in the relationship between this new model of computation and the old ones that we've already been looking at. And it's important for us to note that um, regular languages and regular expressions share the name regular. So maybe spoiler alert, we're going to show that these are the same class as well. To get started on this, I want to start by just showing uh, a very simple um, relationship here. That is, if you have a regular expression, then you can build a NFA for it. And to do this, we're going to rely on some of the constructions for NFAs that we explored earlier when we were looking at NFA. So uh, follow with me for a second. When we're going to do this proof, it's going to be fairly straightforward. In our earlier video, we defined what a regular expression was, and we defined it recursively with these six rules, what these six rules tell us, okay? And what I'm going to do to show that I can build an NFA is just show for each of these six rules that I can build an NFA for each of those regular expressions. So let's look at this first one here. The first one here is um, when our regular expression is just equal to some uh, letter or some symbol from our alphabet sigma. Uh, and we can build a very simple NFA here, N1 for that, that you just, if you get that symbol, you move into the accept state. Otherwise, all other transitions die off. So the only way you're gonna accept is you have exactly one sigma. Makes sense, okay. Uh, let's do let's look, at, look at the second one here. Regular expression is just the uh, empty string. So again, very simple machine we design. It's got a single state. It's an accept state, so it accepts epsilon, but all other ex exiting transitions are dead. So any other symbol you get, uh, you reject. Okay, so that's, again, pretty straightforward. And copying that same machine down, but removing the accept state, now makes it so that it rejects every single symbol or every single string, and that would be the empty set. So these three machines here, N1, N2, and N3, prove that regular expressions of these first three types are indeed uh, regular in the sense that they can be simulated by a uh, non-deterministic finite automata. Now, let's look at these last three ones, union, concatenation, and star. We had proven in the previous video on closure of the regular languages that if you have a regular language and you union it to another regular language, you get a, a, you get a third regular language. And the way we proved this was by building an NFA, saying imagine you had an NFA for each of these, and then we showed how you could union them together. We also showed how you can concatenate them together, and we also show how taking an, a uh, original machine, you could star it together. So using those constructions now, what you can do is take any regular expression that you want, starting with very simple machines like this, use our constructions for concatenation, union, and star to build that regular expression into a big machine using all these little smaller atomic machines. Since we've already proven that we can do that, it follows in our proof at least, we don't actually have to demonstrate it, it follows in our proof that we therefore can build any, uh, we can build an NFA for any regular expression uh, of these final three forms as well, four, five, and six, the recursive forms. So this simple proof here allows us to see, what did it allow us to see? It allowed us to show that for any regular expression, there is a corresponding NFA. Notice this is only one direction. It's saying regular expressions can be simulated by NFAs. We have not yet said that NFAs can be simulated by regular expressions. Okay, let's go through this construction one time just to sort of see how it works. So for instance, here I'm gonna start out with this regular expression, zero, one, star, union, one, zero. It's a very simple one. Why? Because I don't want to end up with a really big, nasty machine at the end, which is potential. I want one that's fairly simple. So I'm going to start out with two machines that I've already, I've kind of 
uh, skipped a few steps in the construction because if we were technically going to concatenate the machines for 0 and 1 together, there would be a few extra epsilon transitions in here that I've just eliminated because they're redundant and, non and unnecessary. But we can see here that this first machine detects only 0 1s. If you get a 0 1, you're good. Anything else is rejected. And the second one here detects only 1 zeros. Again, anything else is rejected. So I've highlighted in red what these two machines uh, are currently doing for us in this regular expression. So now I want to apply the construction for the Cleamy star operator to this first machine. And remember what we did with that is we took our old accept state, um, depending on our construction, we sometimes leave it as an accept state or sometimes we remove it as an accept state. It looks like in this case, I've removed it as an accept state and I've created a new accept state that is a new start state as well. This was to make sure that we could handle the epsilons, remember. So this way we could do zero copies of the string. Then if we follow this epsilon transition to get back to the accept state, we need to have at least one copy of the string and then we can repeat that loop as many times as we want. So we've captured the clean star operator on the zero one. Okay, and all that remains now is to union these two machines together. And if you remember how we do that, it's by creating a new start state and having an epsilon transition to each of the original start states. So now we can run these two machines in parallel is how we like to think of that. This machine's running, this machine's running. If either of them end in an accept state, we accept. Okay, so that was just a quick little example of this construction showing how we can start with a regular expression and end up with a non-deterministic finite automata. This can be particularly useful inside of a computer where we might want to be using a regular expression for some uh, purpose, but to actually compute with it, we often want a state machine uh, that, should, that we can simulate. Okay, so what is the takeaway from that simple proof and that simple construction? is that uh, if you have a regular expression, then it is at least, uh, or it is at most as powerful as the, uh, the NFAs or DFAs that we have. So um, anytime you have a regular expression, you know you can build an NFA for it. But are there NFAs that do not have corresponding regular expressions? That's the question that remains. So we know that regular expressions are not more powerful than NFAs and DFAs, but it's potentially that NFAs and DFAs are more powerful than regular expressions. Again, spoiler alert, they are not. I mentioned that earlier and we're gonna demonstrate that now as well. So let's consider, we're gonna go through another construction now, but this construction is not gonna be simple like the last one we just did. So it's gonna take a few steps here and I'm gonna demonstrate it as we go so we can follow along. So what's our theorem here? It's really just the backwards version of that same theorem we just proved, which is now we're going to start with an NFA and we're going to show that there's a corresponding regular expression. And we're using the same strategy that we've done in that last simulation and the last couple simulation examples we've done, which is we're going to construct an, a regular expression from the NFA that we have for our language. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to do a construction or a conversion, if you like. We're going to convert our NFA into a regular expression. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do that using something special, a special kind of NFA that really we only use for this construction. Um, it's called a generalized deterministic or non-deterministic. It should be a non-deterministic finite automata here. And let's just see what it is. So here's a, here's a normal... Uh, uh, non-deterministic finite automata. Again, I've started with a very simple one that only has two states to make it easy for us. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to add, we're going to change this so that it's in this generalized uh, non-deterministic finite automata style. And so here I'm going to stipulate what that means. First of all, um, our start state cannot have any incoming transitions to it usually or it's very common for our start state to have an incoming transition so this means we're probably gonna have to make a new start state um, there's also only a single accept state and it should have no outgoing transitions again this is a very strict stipulation this is not the case for most of our machines most of our machines are going to have multiple accept states and those accept states are likely to have outgoing transitions from them finally and this one in our diagram we're going to omit but 
um, uh, we wanted to think of this at least conceptually, that we need to remember that there are actually transitions between the other states, the missing transitions, that we could technically label with the empty set saying the way that we follow this transition is there's no way to follow this transition. Now why we're doing that or why we want to keep that in mind here is that as we are processing, as we're tra transforming our generalized non-deterministic finite automata into a regular expression, we are going to start um, adding in transitions where there may not have been transitions before. And we want to maybe remember that if there was no transition there before, that technically there was one, and we could have had it labeled with the empty set. And we'll see more of that in a second when we, we get to our example. So let's take our, our machine now and change it. So maybe let's just go back here. So first of all, this machine here has a start state, but it has an incoming transition. It also has a accept state, but it has an outgoing transition. So if we want to uh, change that into a generalized version of the same thing, we need to extract the start and the accept state and make them their own special states. So I made a new start state here with an epsilon transition that goes to the old start state. That allows the performance to be maintained, that it still works the same way, but now our generalized non-deterministic finite automata uh, has the condition of our start state has no incoming transitions. Okay. Likewise, for our accept state, no outcoming transitions. Well, we've just added an epsilon transition from the old accept state to this new one. So this way, our the Uh, the functionality of our machine has not changed. We still have the same, it still accepts the same strings. Now what we want to do is we're going to use this machine to build up our regular expression. So now what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to remove a single state at a time until we only have two states left. And those states will be the start and the accept state, those new ones that we've created. We're not going to remove those states. Those states will always remain. Um, if we get to a point where there's only those two states remaining, there will be a uh, regular expression labeling the transition between those states, and that will be our regular expression that uh, corresponds to the machine. So let's go ahead and see how we're going to remove a state. So let's imagine here that we have uh, this sort of general setup for three states in our uh, machine where we have uh, I j and r and we're going to remove r in this step okay so what we've got here in this diagram is so we've got these transitions labeled with uh regular expressions at the moment so uh in our generalized non-deterministic finite automata we are potentially going to have regular expressions labeling our transitions although you, if you want you can imagine for the moment that they are not regular expressions or at least they are simple degenerate regular expressions they might just be a sim uh, a single symbol or the empty string okay um, but again for the moment uh, uh, we can generalize these to regular expressions so we're going to take out this state r and what we're going to think about when we take out the state r are the ways we can move from i to j. The original way we can move from i to j is to just follow its original transition by satisfying this regular expression r4. You'll notice it's showing up down here as the second term. The other path we can take from i to j is an indirect one that goes through state r, and that's the state that we're removing. So what we want to do is update the regular expression on this connection between i and r to allow, or i and j, sorry, to allow it to take the path through r. Now let's see, if we were following that path, what would we have to do? Well, first we'd have to have a regular expression r1. Then we could take regular expression r2 as many times as we want, or skip it, and then we follow up with regular expression R3. If we can do that, then we can transition from I to J. Notice that that's exactly the regular expression I've written down here. We have R1 coming into state R, R2 star saying take this loop as many times as you want, including zero, and then exit by following R3, that will get you to IJ. So what this is saying is we can remove state R as long as we replace this, this regular expression R4 here with this new one, which notice includes R4, but also includes the transition between I and J moving through this state R. 
All right, so let's see if we can do that here, uh, removing our first state. The state that we're going to remove here is this one here, okay? To remove this state, we're going to say, we're gonna update the transition that came from this other state to the accept state. Now this, this first state up here had no transition originally between those two states. Now remember what I said earlier, we're gonna remember, oh wait, that means there's an empty set there. And we're gonna union the empty set to whatever other regular expression we get when we transition through these indir indirect states. Now, the empty set union any other set is just that other set. So we can ignore that empty set bit, just remembering that whatever transition we have here that we come up with, we're gonna to have to label that new transition. So let's see, how do we get from this state to the accept state? We need a one, and then we could take a zero or a one as many times as we want, and then we need an empty string. So if you see the regular expression that I've, I've used over here, it's the one, that's the first one. Then I take in this bit here, zero union one, and I throw it inside a star, so I can take it as many times as I want. And then I concatenate it on the empty string at the end, but that doesn't do anything, so it's sort of invisible, so I, you don't see it there. But this regular expression now captures the path of moving from this state to the accept state um, while moving through the state that we removed. Uh, but um, after we've removed it, we've got the same, we preserve the functionality, and now we've got one less state. So we can see that the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is remove this state here. Let's anticipate what's gonna happen when we do that. To remove that state, we're gonna have a new transition between the accept and the reject, or sorry, the start state and the accept state. And when we move from that one, how do we get there? Well, first we need the empty string, okay, concatenating that does nothing. Then we can take as many copies of this zero as we like, and then we follow this regular expression. So it looks to me like we're gonna get zero star put on the front of this one here. And sure enough, after we move out here, we've added a zero star on here, and this is the regular expression that we end up with for our original NFA uh, N. This will be our R. So what this allows us to do, this construction, is it allows us to show that uh, we can create a uh, NFA for every RE and a, an RE for every NFA. And if we can do that, then that means that these three models of computation, deterministic finite automata, non-deterministic finite automata, and regular expressions, all have equal power. They all have equal power for describing or detecting presence in a language. And we call these languages the regular languages. So uh, that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in that next video.